Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Thursday the 3rd of February 2022 and we're providing our regular daily update on what is happening in markets generally, economic news, geopolitical news and of course for all of us the price of gold and silver. The news today has been quite concerning for a number of reasons, particularly those in living in the United Kingdom will have found once again that our cost of living is rising because the Bank of England, as we can see by this headline, has raised rates with four of the bank officials actually voting for a larger increase than that which we have had. And this is in line with announcements that we are to expect much higher energy bills, which we shall cover shortly, in just a couple of months' time. On top of that, our national insurance contributions are likely to rise. This is an additional taxation on top of income tax. And shop prices are getting out of control. Let's take a look at the Bank of England first. The Bank of England increased its key interest rate in a bid to contain the fastest inflation in three decades, with some policymakers unexpectedly seeking a more aggressive response to rising prices. The Monetary Policy Committee, which is the equivalent to the FOMC in the United States, voted to raise borrowing costs by 25 basis points to half a percent on Thursday. Four out of the nine-member panel pushed for a 50 basis point increase which would have been unprecedented since the central bank gained independence from government in 1997. The move ushered in a new era where the Bank of England will start to unwind £895 billion of bond holdings it amassed over the past decade to stimulate the economy. The decision came shortly after Chancellor of the Exchequer Rishi Sunak announced a £9 billion programme to help consumers shoulder rising energy bills. Costlier fuel helps explain why the Bank of England worries that inflation could soon peak at more than triple its target. We have not raised rates today because the economy is roaring away, Governor Andrew Bailey said at a press briefing in London. We face the risk that some of the higher imported inflation could become entrained within the domestic economy, leading to a longer period of high inflation. While the economy certainly is not rip-roaring away. However, our friends over the water, the Europeans, the European Central Bank renewed its pledge to withdraw pandemic stimulus only gradually, even after a record inflation reading fed market expectations for a first interest rate hike in more than a decade this year. A day after data showed the steepest euro area price gains on record defined predictions for a lessened pace, the governing council on Thursday today reiterated that it will slow bond buying across 2022 and end asset purchases entirely before raising borrowing costs. Interestingly, the Europeans are adopting a very different approach to the UK and the Federal Reserve. Business news. Bank boss says do not ask for a big pay rise. Why? Because we will have wage push inflation and this is the bad news energy bills to rise by 54 percent a year for millions a typical household will pay 1971 pounds a year from april and the government has offered some small rebates to such households in america According to the BBC, at least, leader of IS taken off battlefield in US raid. Canada's Conservatives oust party leader O'Toole. And really not a lot about the economy mentioned here, which is a little disappointing. Bearing in mind that the rise of sterling today, simply because of the rise in interest rates, has affected the dollar index. And we now have a dollar index that has come down half a point to 95.43. We've very little doubt that that will change soon and start to rise again as the Fed 
then starts its interest rate rises in March. Energy prices, yep, Brent crude has hit that. Well, when I looked at it a few minutes ago, it had hit the $90 level. It's just crept back down to 89.96 and WTI crude 88.88. Equity markets taken a tumble. First of all, overnight, the Asian Pacific markets broadly were down 1%. Now, today, we have the UK market and European markets down between 0.7 and 1, well, nearly 2% for the Eurostox index. And the American market, we can see here, down again between 1 and 2.72%. Looking at the economic calendar because there's been some very important news announced today. First of all, yesterday's figure, the ADP employment report, we could see that for January, rather than having an increase of jobs of 200,000, the figures actually came in at minus 301,000. And that contributed also to a slight weakening of the US dollar. The initial jobless claims announced today have come in at 238,000, which is lower actually than expectations, and so too have the continuous jobless claims. Productivity for quarter four is up, up considerably from the previous report, and up compared to expectations, coming in at 6.6% against expectations of 44 the market services PMI virtually as anticipated at 51.2 against 51. And the ISM services index again as anticipated at 59.9% against expectations of 60. Factory orders exactly as anticipated at minus 0.4. So we have now the all important non-farm payrolls due out tomorrow. This is where all the attention is going to be based. And quite frankly... If the figures are extremely poor and there are expectations of 150,000 new jobs, it's very difficult to sort of see how the markets are going to react to that because technically what should occur is that that will further weaken the US dollar because it would make rate rises less likely. But we're very much aware that the Fed has already given the commitment that its priority short term, and not necessarily jobs, it's inflation. And so any trader or dealer who thinks mm, this may delay any Fed move, if those figures are poor, may be fooling themselves. At the same time, if the number of jobs increases dramatically, then we'll see another about turn and we'll see a strengthening of the US dollar and a weakening of precious metals and we have to say precious metals have not fared well today even though the US dollar has fallen. Gold is down four and a half dollars at one thousand eight hundred and six dollars and if we look at that compared to how they closed on Friday so the figure for the week is actually up uh, it's up fourteen nearly fifteen dollars. It's just changed now to one thousand eight hundred and seven. So it's up fifteen dollars on the week. But you can see this volatility. It opened down, went up, came back down, went up, came back down, went up, came back down, and now appears at least to be moving back up, being as low as seventeen eighty for the week and as high as eighteen eleven. So it's up point seven four percent on the week, but silver we can see has taken a bit of a dive and let me refresh the page and we can see there we go about 20 minutes ago silver was down 42 cents it's now down 34 at 22 dollars and 42 cents on the week so far silver is eight cents down so again not performing as well as gold and again we've seen down up huge sort of spike on Tuesday then a fall then another attempted spike then another fall and then another attempted spike and we'll see where that goes tomorrow we did actually say to expect some serious volatility this week simply because of the volume of economic data being announced and frankly we have had that volume albeit 
within approximately a one dollar range cryptocurrency markets like the equity market taking another hit down nearly three percent with a market cap of 1.68 trillion and we now have bitcoin falling again and for those who follow ethereum 2600 both up over a seven day period but it looks like those gains may very well be lost by the end of the week that's it for now please if you haven't done so do subscribe to our channel so that we can inform you when you press the bell sign of new videos as and when they're published if you wish to give us a thumbs up that would be most welcome we see quite a bit of change tomorrow our overall sort of conviction is because the dollar's fallen back quite a bit today it may strengthen a little tomorrow so we're not anticipating unless the jobs figures are way off beam we're not really anticipating much of a resurrection in either the gold or the silver price but that remains to be seen and we will find out more once those non-farm payrolls have been announced on the downside however we're still sticking to our weekly forecast we do not really see silver falling below december's lows of $21.50 and really we don't see gold going much below 1800 and certainly not below 1750 which is an extremely strong floor as far as we're concerned to the upside there's only one more day left for the week so gold is going to if it hits 1825 on the upside it will have done extraordinarily well and if silver manages to get back to $23, then it too will have done extraordinarily well. Thank you for listening. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.